Hello, my name is Philip Cameron. I'm joined with my beautiful daughter, Melody, and we are so glad you joined with us today. We're going to go, we travel today, not to Scotland, but to Ireland, and I know you're going to love it. I'm so glad you joined with us today. This is Daily Faith. This happened in the battle of, in the Valley of Allah, where the Philistines and the Israelites were facing each other across a valley, just like this. A wee boy called David was asked by his father to go down and give some cheese and flour to his brothers who were in the army fighting against the giants. When David got there, the giant had so defeated the enemy, no one had drawn swords, but just the, the, the presence of the giant had made the Israelites fearful. The Bible tells us that David came in and says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he would defy the army of the living God? And listen to what happened. The Bible says that the king offered him half the kingdom if he would go and fight Goliath. For every Goliath of your life, there is a brook. And in every brook, there is a stone. And the Bible tells us that David ran and picked up stones, smooth stones, stones that had been weathered by time and water. And he went and ran toward the Philistine and put the smooth stone into a sling. And you know the story. The giant fell. I want to encourage you today. You may be facing giants. They may be threatening you because every morning and every night, Goliath would threaten the children of Israel. If you defeat me, we will serve you. But if I defeat you, you will serve me. I don't care what the Goliaths of your world tell you. If you have a brook and you have a stone and you have a calling from God, you are going to be victorious over the Goliaths of your life. Don't you dare quit. God bless you. And that was me in beautiful Southern Ireland. And I saw a brook and I saw some stones and I said, stop the car. I want to go out. Now, I'm going to tell you something just now that is absolutely forbidden to be repeated after this program. You understand? I'm going to tell you and then you must forget it. My kids bought me, a, what do you call it, Ancestry.com, this DNA test thing. I have been a proud Scotsman all my life. I'll have you know, I'm Scottish. My, I came off the boat myself. Not my grandfather came off the boat. I came off the boat. So they bought this thing and I spat in the wee tube and sent it away. Proudly, excited. Oh, yes. I was going to show them their Great bloodline hundreds of years back. Years. So six weeks later, uh -huh. I got a, a <laughs> message on my iPad, um, your results are in. So I couldn't get them out of my blessed I iPad, I almost lost my salvation. So I dash one of our kids, I said, Dasha. So she opened up after a few clicks and she started to laugh and she laughed and she wouldn't tell me. What, I said, give, me my, give it to me. And she moved away and I couldn't get, she, she kept laughing. And fi finally through her tears, she said, you are half Irish. Talk about sh a shock. <laughs> so I, all of my life I've told Irish jokes. And I just want to, every Irishman in the world, I want to ask you forgiveness. Because I'm one of you too. And we went to Ireland, my sons and I went to Ireland. And I saw that brook and those stones. And what I said, my goodness, is so true. For every giant in your life, there is a brook and there is a stone. But listen to what more there is. There is a kingdom. David had no idea the day he ran down towards the, the, the battle, the, the, the valley of Allah, what happened was the Philistines were on one side and, the, and the, the Israelites were on the other. And every morning, as soon as the, the, the camp stirred, 
this giant called Goliath would step out and he would threaten them across the valley and would say, if you defeat me, we will serve you. But if I defeat your best man, you will serve us. And I've discovered in my life, the Goliaths of my life show up early in the morning and late at night. The nights I've lost sleep over Goliath shouting at me, I can't begin to tell you. And David, who hadn't been caught up in the politics of the moment, came in fresh from the fields, playing his harp and making music to the Lord and looking after his sheep. So he wasn't cuttered and encumbered by what had been going on. And he walked in, and as he walked in with the sheep, with the, the loaves, I mean with the cheese and the flour, this guy shows up across the valley and he says, Who is that uncircumcised Philistine that he would defy the armies of the living God? Now David was a wee boy, 14, 15 years of age. And he, he had so much clarity. Now listen to me. He had so much clarity in this crisis that the king heard about him. And I'm here to tell you something. When you have a word from the Lord, the king is going to end up hearing from you. I don't care where you start out. I don't care how low you are on the totem pole. God will find a way of getting you to where you need to be. And the Bible says that he went to Saul. King, the king who was head and shoulders. Saul was a big man. He was head and shoulders above everybody else. And, 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 and Saul said, what are you talking about this giant? And David said, I was, uh, one day a, a bear came and I killed the bear. And a lion came and I killed the lion. And the same God that delivered me out of the hand of the bear and the lion will deliver me out of the uncircumcised Philistine. And he was so sure and so full of purpose that the king believed him and said, you do this boy and you'll have half my kingdom and my daughter's hand in marriage. And a wee boy, they tried to put on the king's armor. I can imagine the king's helmet went right down to his shoulders. He's, he couldn't see where he was going. And he put it off, the Bible says. You're not fighting this thing with flesh and blood. You're fighting your circumstance with, with God on your side, not metal and steel. And he ran towards the enemy. He ran towards his Goliath. And I speak to you in the name of Jesus that faith will rise up inside you that you've run away too long. You've hidden too long. And it's time to stand up and say, Goliath, I'm going to cut your head off in the name of Jesus. I've, been, I've taken enough abuse in my life and this is going to end today and I'm coming for you in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says he found a brook, the brook sheriff, five smooth stones. Do you know why? I took, you know, you, you've heard the story. Goliath had four brothers. And he was well prepared to kill Goliath and go after the brothers after that. And the wee boy that day, now listen, important. All the army of Israel is standing watching outside their tents, looking down at the valley as this little wee fella makes his way towards Goliath. And Goliath is insulted. Who do you think I am? I'm going to feed this little thing to the dogs. Don't you dare disregard and disrespect me. And David put a stone in the sling and knocked his head off. The only way that David could have been qualified to be king of Israel, a, a young man, was if he did something that no one else could do. And he did it. He killed Goliath. And all the soldiers behind him suddenly realized that this boy had done what they could not do. And by the time they left the battlefield on the way home, the Bible says they were singing about David. Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his tens of thousands. How many had David killed? One. But let me tell you something. Once you've killed the Goliath of your life, it's going to feel like a hundred thousand. And I pray in the name of Jesus that the brook and the smooth stones that you need will show up in your life. That you'll have the courage to stand up and say, not now, never again. And I'm going to take the Goliath on. And I've discovered this. The mountain that you face and attack becomes a molehill. The mole, the mole hill that you're on away from becomes a mountain. 
And I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you will have the strength and courage to believe God for the giants of your life to be defeated in Jesus' name. Amen. Watch this. I'll be back in a moment. Full House. It's time for Household Salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Camerons. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail. Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. One of my favorite Christmas songs is I'll Be Home for Christmas. You can count on me. I love the Christmas season. I love the fact that our family is always together. I love it. This book, Household Salvation, Full House, It's Time for Household Salvation, is a tremendous gift of salvation you can give to your family. You can order this book today by dialing the number on your screen, 833-324-5932, and it will tell you a story that will change you and your family's life. I promise you. It's a story of households of age. Jesus came to this world, not just to sightsee. He came to seek and save those that were lost. And the Camerons were lost and Jesus found us. And we've been telling people ever since. And whoever's unsaved in your family, I'd like to believe God with you for a breakthrough before Christmas time. And you can call our number and give us the names of your loved ones. In fact, the best way, if you write me personally, just write Philip at www.philipdcameron.com. In my office, right beside my sofa, I have an old ark that was made many, many years ago by my, my wife Chrissy's uncle. It's a replica, just a wee ark. And there's a door on the side. And if you send me the names of your loved ones, I will put their name into the ark as a symbolic gesture that we're believing God for total household salvation for your family. In the name of Jesus. So get this book today. I want you to watch this video. Christmas in Karnesh. God bless you. Hello. My name is Ulizana, and I lived in this hospital for nine years. And I remember that my favorite time, it was Christmas, when people used to come to visit us and sing with us, uh, doing dramas for us, and even giving us gifts. I love this time because people made us feel special and not forgotten. And one of my dreams, it was to come back in this place and do the same thing for the next generation. And here we are with the Orphan's Hands team giving gifts to these amazing kids. So thank you for making this day possible. are never
never closer to the heart of God than when you're caring for the widow and the orphan. Pure religion, undefiled, is when you care for the widow and the orphan. And this time of year is always special and at the same time always bittersweet for us because we would love to do more and we are restricted by what money we have available to do what we need to do. My wife Chrissy and Melody spend literally hundreds upon hundreds of hours, thousands of hours, really all year long, collecting things, buying bargains, making these boxes up. If you go to my house right now, on the upstairs of my house, my wife's got a craft room, a large room, and it is stacked from floor to ceiling of every box she has made personally. My granddaughters, Ali and Kara, go up there and help, or Melody goes and helps. Our whole family is involved, not just with, with getting a box to, to throw at a kid. What we discovered in our, in our time in, in missions, that if you just give a kid a box, a shoe box or whatever, nine times out of ten they never see what's in the box because other kids, other bullies in the orphanage or even the orphanage workers take this stuff away. And because we've built relationship over the years with these orphanages and our kids know the kids in the orphanage and our kids know the staff, and the staff know we're coming back next week. It's amazing how much stuff gets to stay where the kids really are. And we need you to help us right now at this very, very important time of the year. Your gift today can help us put a container in Moldova. It costs about $9,000 just to ship the Christmas boxes. We have containers of furniture that needs to be sent over. And your giving right now has never been more important. If a hundred people were to give a gift of $90, that would sponsor a container to Moldova. You can help with that. The greatest need we have all year long is a dollar a day. Each of the houses that we sponsor costs 120 people giving one dollar a day. And that pays for the salaries of the staff, that pays for the heating, the lights, the gas to cook with and heat the buildings, clothes for all the kids. You imagine, when summertime comes and someone needs a pair of flip-flops and there's like 80 pairs of flip-flops that you need, never mind the houses you're visiting with broken families all the time. In the winter times, we keep, like right now, we, we, we sponsor villages and we go to every widow's home in the village and we buy them coal and wood and bring them food on a regular weekly basis and keep widows that have no other hope alive. Orphans do that. We've turned orphans into sons and daughters and sons and daughters into missionaries. All of this depends on you being used by God to make it possible. There's a number on your screen right now. 833-324-5932, Daily Faith. You dial that number and say, listen, I want to be a part of helping these kids. I'd like to bring a container to Moldova Someone watch me just now. You could give $9,000 and support a whole container full, full of tens of, 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 of tens of thousands of dollars of stuff. It would be like giving $100,000 for $9,000 because the stuff we have already. Those that can help us with the furnishing of the homes. You can go to the registries at Walmart and at Target. And if you see anything available, if it's grayed out, it means you can't order because it's been ordered by somebody else. But you can be a miracle today in the hands of God in an orphan's life. They came to Jesus and Jesus put them into hell, cast them out into outer darkness, the Bible says. And he sa they said, why? What have we done? And he says, I was naked and you never clothed me. And I was hungry and you never fed me. And I was in prison and you never visited me. And they said, when did we do this? And Jesus said, when you did it not to the least of these, you did it not unto me. And then others came and he called them sheep. And he opened the, the gates of heaven and welcomed them in. Read it yourself. And they said, w I, I was naked and you clothed me and I was hungry and you fed me. And I was in prison and you visited me. And they said, when did we visit you in prison and feed you and clothe you? And Jesus said, this isn't Paul writing. This isn't a doctrine. This is Jesus describing the final judgment. Jesus telling you what's going to happen. And he says, on that day, the separation of the sheep and the goats. And he said, enter into the, well, into the joy of, of 
of, of heaven. When you did it the least of these, you did it unto me. And when you give today and help us with this Christmas container, when you give to help us with the furnishings that we need, you are literally doing it to the least of these. And I promise you this, there is a reward from God that money cannot buy. A dollar a day. If 120 people watching this program right now would say, well, I can give a dollar a day less than the price of a can of Coke. It's, it's, you, you can make a, a change jar in your house and have a dollar a day and lose change. But for that girl you just saw, Ulizana, spent 10 years in that place. It's a tubercul Where you saw those kids just now were at tuberculosis hospital. 10 years she spent in that place. And from there she went to an orphanage for six more years. I met her at 16 and she had spent 16 years in either a tuberculosis hospital, not sick, just nowhere else to put her baby. 10 years in a tuberculosis hospital and six years in an orphanage. And she came to us so angry, so mad. And yesterday she texted me from Moldova and they went to a conference talking about how to help orphans. And the people that were running the, the, the conference were stunned by this group of young folk that came in. And when they discovered they were all orphans from the orphans' hands, and our kids were able to tell the people that were running the conference about a man from Scotland that came and loved them. And, and saw them beyond an orphan and said, if you are born, God has a plan. And the people at the co conference were astonished that these kids could stand there with such confidence having been orphans. Not orphans anymore. They're sons and daughters. And sons and daughters have turned into missionaries. And I could never, ever have done it. I could never have done it without folk like you saying, I'll give a dollar a day. I'll sponsor a container. I'll pay for a room, $5,000 in one of these houses. I could not have done what I've done if someone like you hadn't said, I'll do it with you. And that's, how the, that's, that's what it's about. The number on your screen, 833-DAILY-FAITH or 833-324-5932. You can do something magnificent today for the kingdom of God. Everyone who give that dollar a day I have a book written by one of the kids from the orphanage. Her name is Dasha. She now works in America. She is our interface between all the mission work we do through this young 26, 27-year-old girl, woman, that is astonishing in what she can do. Blows my mind continuously. And one day she came to me and she says, Dad, I want to write, this is our second book. And it's called Every 30 Seconds. That's how often someone is trafficked in the world today. Every 30 seconds. And this is the stories and the testimonies of the kids who sat in darkness until we came and found them. And if you would like to be a part and give a dollar a day and we'll be a part of this miracle that we need right now, we need you today so bad. We need you so desperately to make this miracle happen. Call the number 833-DAILY-FAITH or 833-324-5932 and say, I would like to be a monthly sponsor. I want to give a dollar a day. And you can make a real miracle happen in Moldova. Amen. 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 We've got a couple of minutes left, Mel. What do you think? I am, um, you know, you're talking about uh, Ulizana going back into her orphanage and ministering to, to the kids that are in the very place that she grew up in. Ten years. And kids going back into poor villages not necessarily villages that they came from, but just like where they came from. And I think if David, looking at that Goliath thing, you don't scare me. No. The God I serve is, and the God I serve is bigger than you, anything that you come against us with. And I, the kids um, in orphans' hands, they go into those villages Fearless. and say, poverty, we can... Our God is bigger than that. And I, I think it's incredible that no matter what they've been through, they were the littlest, you know, David was the littlest in his family and he was overlooked so many times and these kids have been overlooked. Yeah. But still they go out there and 
They have no fear. They know what their God can do because they've been taken from the most yeah. unbelievable things. And um, I'm just um, amazed by them. I'm amazed by what God can do when somebody just says, I'm here. I'm trusting you, Lord. And um, it's been an incredible year of ministry with some incredible kids. And we're looking forward to next year. We've grown so much this, this past year, and I can't wait to see what God does through these new hearts that are coming in. And it's Go to your right. phone, 833-324-5932. Make this miracle happen. We love you. Bye-bye. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova from providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells to coal for heat new windows, as well as food and clothing. They champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the Orphan's Hands. If you wanna join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124.